Okay, now we're going to start row 14, and this is where we begin the tree pattern in the center section. We're going to start with a chain 3, just like we've done before. We have the front side facing, and over the next 10 stitches, we're going to work the front post treble crochet and the back post treble crochet. After those first 10 stitches with the ribbing, we are going to now do the cabling section. We start with the um, wheat cable. We skip these first two stitches. We work front post trebles in the next two. Now working behind these stitches just worked, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. That's one. Again, use your fingers to guide your hook there where it needs to go. Now we're going to skip the next two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches, working in front of those last two stitches we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. Okay, now that completes the um, wheat cable. Now we're going to go on to the five honeycomb cables which are done in the opposite manner. We're going to skip two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the next two stitches. Now working in front of these last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two skip stitches, which is the opposite of the way we form this other cabling just here, because you're going to want to make sure that you, you form it in such a way that it, it forms a honeycomb. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble, in the next two stitches. Working behind these two stitches, go ahead and front post treble in the two that we just skipped. And you're going to do what I just showed you here with the honeycomb. We're going to do this five times. This would count as one and do it in the next four honeycombs. Now we come to the wheat cable and we're going to skip two stitches, front post treble crochet in the next two stitches, and just the opposite of what we've been doing with these honeycomb cables, we're going to work behind these two stitches so that we maintain um, the wheat look. I mean a lot of times you can kind of just look at what you're doing and know what the next step is. Do I work in front? Do I work behind? Just, just look at what you've done and try to match what you've done. You know, if you experiment and go the wrong direction, well, that's easy just to pull it out and just do the opposite of what you did, as in working, you know, in front rather than working behind. Now, looking at this, um, obviously, if I work behind, that's going to be wrong because that's going to form part of a honeycomb and where we want to for form the wheat stitch. So I'm going to work in front of that. I can just see that. Um, right now, and that may take you a little bit to to understand it, but um, it you know after a while this does become extremely visual. Okay, now it's time we've come to our stitch markers. Time to change out the crochet hooks for the smaller hook, and I'm going to go ahead and take take this stitch marker out if I can figure out how to do it. And there we go. And the directions for this section of row 14 say to double crochet in the next nine double crochet. So again, we're working through the loops on this middle section. I'm going to go ahead and put that stitch marker right back in because that does keep me on the course for changing the hook. Okay, so go ahead and work nine double crochets. After working those nine double crochets, we're going to work three front post double crochets. And the reason we're doing that is we are beginning to form the trunk of the Christmas tree. So go ahead and do three front post double crochets. And after we do that, make sure you skip three stitches in the back so that you don't skip any stitches. So one, two, three. And then starting in the next stitch, we're going to crochet nine more double crochets all the way until we get to the stitch marker. Once you crochet that ninth double crochet, go ahead and move that stitch marker up right like that so that we are reminded to, yes, 
change our crochet hook once again. Okay, now you know what to do. You should you should be getting uh, familiar with what we're going to do when we get to these cabling sections. We're going to skip two stitches, front post, double, I'm sorry, front post treble crochet in the next two stitches. And as we're working on this wheat stitch, work we start after that, work behind the last two stitches and work in those two skip stitches, front post trebles. Should we get all the loops? Skip the next two stitches. Front post, treble crochet in the next two. And then working in front of these last two stitches, front post, treble in the two skip stitches. Okay, now we're on to the honeycomb sections. We have five of these, as you recall. Skip these two stitches, front post, treble in the next two. Working in front of these last two stitches, front post treble in those two skip stitches. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches. Working behind these two stitches, working a front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. Okay, so we're going to do this four more times so that we have a total of five of these um, honeycombs. That brings us to another wheat cable where we skip two stitches, front post, treble, the next two stitches. Let's go ahead and try to get that out of the way so the camera doesn't focus wrongly on that. And working behind these two stitches. We're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. Skip the next two stitches and then front post treble in the next two. Now working in front of those last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. Okay, and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the ribbing and we're going to start with our, a back post treble and we're going to work over the remaining nine stitches which starts with that back post treble. Okay, alternating front post treble, back post treble. I'll go ahead and work these last stitches with you. brings us to the last stitch here and when we work in the turning chain we're going to work a double crochet since we have the front side facing. Okay so that ends our first row, row 14. Let's go ahead and give it a turn and we're going to begin row 15. Now we're working with the back side facing which means we're going to be working with double crochets, back post double crochets. So we're going to chain two for the turning chain and we start with front post double crochet, back post double crochet, alternate over those first nine stitches. After those nine ribbing stitches, we're going to work back post double crochets over the next 56 stitches through the cabling section. Now that we've come to the stitch marker, we're going to go ahead and take that out and following the directions for row 15, I'm going to double crochet in the next nine stitches working through the top loops for the center section. After crocheting those nine stitches, we're going to work back post double crochets in the next three stitches. Now th these are the stitches that we worked front post double crochets in the row before this. Okay, so that's on those three stitches only. And then we we're going to go back to working in the top loop and also make sure that you skip three stitches here, one, two, three, so that we're not double dipping in any of them. And then double crochet in the next nine stitches. 
Okay, after working that ninth double crochet, and do make sure that you have nine double crochets on each side um, of these front posts. Make sure you put your stitch marker back in at the beginning of that section. And let's make sure we put one at the end. And that is also to remind us to change our hook. So let's go ahead and do that. And now we're going to work 56 back post double crochets across all the cabling section. That's the section with the honeycomb and the wheat cabling. After that, we work front post double crochet, back post double crochet over the next nine stitches, alternating as you go. Row 15 ends with a back post double crochet and then a half double crochet in the turning chain. I think I said that there were nine stitches. There are actually 10 stitches across here on the ribbing. And then after this, we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and turn to work row number 16. And we're going to begin with, now we're working treble crochets, front post treble, followed by a back post treble. Okay, this is going to be over the first 10 stitches here that form the border ribbing. After those 10 front post and back post um, trebles. We're going to come to the wheat cable section. We're going to skip the next two stitches. Front post treble crochet in the next two stitches. Working behind the, the last two stitches work, we're going to work front post trebles in those two skipped stitches. Don't forget to use your thumb to help you find where that stitch is. I know that can be tricky. Okay, now we skip the next two stitches, front post treble crochet in the next two stitches. Working in front of these two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. Okay, so we have that um, wheat cable. Now we're moving on to the honeycomb cables, and it just so happens that they are worked the same way on this particular row. We're going to skip the next two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches, working behind these two stitches. I'm going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. Now, do know, and you probably should know by now, that. Um, these stitches are not always going to be worked the same for the honeycomb and the wheat. If you just kind of do a quick visual to see what row you're on, that will oftentimes help quite a bit. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble and the next two. And working in front of these last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop and show you where we are. Okay, so that you can see the honeycomb and the wheat. Now we're going to go ahead and repeat what we just did here four more times across the row. Okay, after working over the honeycomb section, that brings us to the wheat stitch, and we're going to do the same thing. Skip two, front post treble in the next two stitches. Working behind these two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. Okay, and then skip two stitches, and then front post treble in the next two stitches. Working in front of these Last two stitches, we front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. I know that's a lot of redundancy, but, but sometimes we need that. Okay, now we have come to our stitch marker. And honestly, this is where the fun begins. So let's go ahead and sh change hooks, because that's what that stitch marker is there for, is to remind us to 
change to the smaller size hook size. Now this is where we actually begin the branches of the tree. Now if you look with me on round, I'm sorry, row 16, we are going to um, go to the section where it says um, change to the smaller hook and we're going to double crochet in the first four stitches of this section, working through both loops. Four double crochets. One, two, three, and four. Now at this stage we're going to be working a series of chains and slip stitches but we're only going to be working in the front loop. Okay? So the instructions say, working in front loops only, slip stitch in the next stitch. So we go ahead and slip stitch in the next stitch. And then it says to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're going to slip stitch in the next stitch like this. Okay? And then it says to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then slip stitch in the next stitch. So that's what we're going to do a total of six times. So we've already done this one time, so we're going to do it five more times. Chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Slip stitch. In the next stitch, only working in the front loop, and then chain five. One, two, three, four, five, and then slip stitch in the next, just like that. And we'll do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven single crochets, and then a slip stitch, and then a five. I'm sorry, that was chains, and then five chains. One, two, three, four, five, and slip stitch. Okay, so let's stop and see what we're doing here. So you can see this is kind of forming an irregular, you know, the irregular branches of a tree. So I'm going to do that until I have repeated that a total of six times. Okay, I've just finished working my six repeats of this. So let's just verify what we've done. We have the chain seven and the chain five. That's one, the chain seven, and then chain five. It's two. It's a chain seven and chain five. That's three. There's another one. That's four and five and six. So I do have six repeats. After that, I'm going to work double crochets in the next four and these are going to be working through both loops. That's one, two, three, and four. And go ahead and put your stitch markers back in just right like that. And I'm going to put the other one and on the other side, this is helping me more than I can say. I know you're getting tired of me saying it, but, but I really have a tendency to just barrel on through the pattern and forget little nuances like changing the hook size. So that just kind of reminds me to do that. So I'll go ahead and switch the hook out now. And now we're going to repeat the same cabling pattern across these cables. And like I said before, the, the uh, what we were going to do in this row for both the wheat cable and the honeycomb cable are exactly the same. So let me just work it one time and then you can work it across um, seven times. And this is what you're going to do. Skip two, front post treble in the next two stitches, working in behind these stitches front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. Skip two more stitches and front post treble in the next two stitches. Now 
working in front of the last two stitches here, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. So go ahead, okay, and this is what you have. So go ahead and work this um, in the next six, work, we're actually work this six more times across these cabling rows, and then I'll show you what to do at the ribbing. Okay, after working that those cabling sections, do a quick visual check to make sure that the honeycombs look like honeycombs and that the weed stitch looks like the weed stitch. It's so easy to just flip one of these, um, you know, stitches or a couple of these just without thinking. So just make sure you do a quick visual check. And then we get to the ribbing and we start with a back post treble. Remember, these are all treble crochets on the ribbing when we're crocheting with the um, front side facing us. So, and then a front post treble. So go ahead and work that over the next, I believe it's one, two, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stitches. And then we will end with our double crochet in the turning chain. Okay, now to begin row 17, we're gonna chain two, and we're gonna work front post and back post alternating, and this is using front post, back post, double crochet. So front post, double crochet, back post, double crochet, and go ahead and work that over the next nine stitches. And that will end you with a front post, double crochet on that ribbing. Now we're going to work 56 back post double crochets across the cabling section, okay, which is actually all the way until you get to the stitch marker. So go ahead and work those back post double crochets. That will bring you to the first stitch marker. So let's go ahead and take that stitch marker out. And as it reminds us to switch our hooks to the smaller hook. Now we're going to be working double crochets in the first four stitches, working through both loops. That's one, two, three, and four. Now for the next stitches, we are only going to be working in the remaining loop um, of the previous row, which was down here. You can see these. So what we're going to do now is we are going to work treble crochets in that remaining loop. So make sure we're working trebles, not doubles here. We're going to pick up that loop that was left from the slip stitch rows with the chains to help form the trees. So we're going to do this 13 times. I'm going to work this all the way through so that you can see how you can pick up this loop. I know that can be a little tricky. Okay. And this helps to form the backdrop for those chains, you know, as you can tell, are forming the branches on our Yule tree or our Christmas tree. Okay, just a few more here to go. And after we, again, okay, one more. And I am going to verify the count just to make sure that I didn't skip any of these. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. It's always a good day when your nut stitch count works out. Now we're going to double crochet in the remaining double crochets, working through both of the loops. Okay, two three, and four. And let's go ahead and put that stitch marker back where it can remind us again. Put that one in. It's being a little stubborn. Okay, that one goes there. 
and let's go ahead and put the other one let's see here there it goes right here so they make sure that we hold those sections special and we change our hook back to the large I crochet I'm sorry J crochet hook we were just using the I so now we're going to work 56 back post double crochets across yeah 56 double back post double crochets across the what am I trying to say here the uh, cabling portion after those 56 back post double crochets we're going to alternate front post and back post double crochets over the ribbing for the next 10 stitches and we end with a half double crochet worked in that turning chain just like so now to start row 18 we're going to chain three and we're going to work the front post and back post treble crochet starting with the front post treble and then a back post treble we're going to be doing that over the next 10 stitches after those 10 stitches we begin the cabling section and we're going to skip the next two we're working on the wheat stitch we're going to front post treble in the next two stitches working behind these two stitches we just worked we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped okay skipping the next two stitches and front post treble in the next two now while working this round or I'm sorry this row the wheat and the honeycomb are worked differently so do do take notice of that now working in front of these last two stitches we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped okay now we're on to the honeycomb portion and you can always tell by the little shadow boxes that these make and you're going to skip the next two stitches front post treble in the next two and what I'm do doing now over the next eight stitches is what you'll repeat um, five times or actually do five times total okay working in front of these two stitches this is where this differs from the the um, wheat stitch we're going to front post treble in those two sti skipped stitches and now do the other side of the honeycomb as you can see that come together skip these two stitches front post treble in the next two stitches now working behind these stitches so that it maintains that honeycomb shape front post treble in the two skipped stitches okay so I'm going to pause so what I just completed here go ahead and do that over the next four honeycomb stitches across so after working over those five honeycomb cables let's go ahead and we now are going to be working the wheat cable so let's go ahead and skip two and, and we basically are doing just the opposite of what we did in the way of um, whether you work in front or behind the cable so now we're going to work behind these two stitches and we're going to work two front post trebles in those two skip stitches and skip the next two stitches front post treble in the next two stitches working in front of those last two stitches we're going to actually front post treble in those two skipped stitches okay and again I like I always say do a visual check just to make sure your stitches are going in the desired direction and that looks good okay, that brings us to our first stitch marker which tells us to change our hook so let's go ahead and do that and I'm going to remove the stitch marker and put it right back in and the directions for row number 18 say to double crochet in the next five stitches so we're working in that tree section and we're going to be working through the two loops at the top of the previous stitch so we're going to do five double crochet and this is four and 
five. We'll be working in one of those trebles that we worked. Okay, so after we do that, we are going to work only in the front loop of the stitches for this next section. We are going to slip stitch in the next stitch, which is right here. Slip stitch. Now we're going to do something a little different. Instead of chaining seven, we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five, and then slip stitch in the front loop only of the next stitch. And then now we're going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then slip stitch in that next stitch like so. Okay, we are going to do that a total of five times. Okay, last time we did that six times, we're only going to do it five times this time. So I'll go ahead and do that again with you. Chain five, and then slip stitch, working in the front loop only of the next stitch, and then chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then slip stitch in that next stitch, working only in the front loop. Okay, so I've done that one, two times. So do that three more times for a total of five repeats. Okay, let's just verify what we have. We should have a five chain and then a seven chain. That's one repeat, two, three, four, and then five repeats. After that, we're going to work double crochets in the next five double crochets, and that's working through both loops through the top. So one, two, three, four, and five. Let's go ahead and take the time to move our stitch markers because they are serving us so well. Okay, and the stitch marker was a reminder to change the hooks again. So we're going to go ahead and change the hooks and we're going to go ahead and work the cabling just like we did on the other side with skip two, front post, treble, and the next two, this is over the wheat stitch. Remember to work behind the next two. And skip the next two stitches, front post treble, and the next two stitches. Working in front of these two stitches, front post treble, and the next two. And then we work the honeycomb, as you know, in a different way. We skip two, front post treble, and the next two stitches. And then instead of working behind, we go ahead and work in front, going for that honeycomb, kind of a shadow box effect. Okay. And then skip the next two, front post treble, and the next two stitches. Working behind these two stitches, we're going to front post treble in those two skipped stitches. Okay, so if you could just repeat the last eight stitches four more times. After the honeycomb section, we have one more wheat cable. We skip two, front post treble in the next two stitches. Working behind the last two stitches, go ahead and front post treble in the two stitches that were skipped. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble, in the next two stitches, and working in front of the last two stitches, go ahead and front post treble in those two skip stitches. And it's now to take a minute, or a few seconds at least, and just verify that we did that section correctly, and that looks good. 
Um, trust me, I, I need to do this for myself quite often because there are a lot of times when I just kind of um, crochet away without thinking and I kind of goof up a little bit and have to do some serious ripping. And I don't want you to have to do that. I certainly don't enjoy it. Now we get to the um, ribbing part. We're going to start with a back post treble crochet and then a front post treble crochet. Go ahead and work that over the next nine stitches. And this row ends with a double crochet worked right into that chain. Okay, let's go ahead and turn and we'll start row number 19. Now we're going to be working with the back side facing, so we're going to be working back post double crochets, which means we're going to chain two at the beginning and we're going to begin with a front post double crochet and then back post double crochet. Go ahead and alternate those stitches over the next nine stitches. Now we're going to work back post double crochets over the next 56 stitches that encompasses the cabling section. So go ahead and work back post double crochets until you reach the first stitch marker. Okay, now that we've come to our stitch marker, let's go ahead and change our hook, remove the stitch marker, and the directions for row number 19 for this section say to double crochet in the next five stitches and that will be working through both loops. Let's do double crochets one, two, three, four, and five. Now for this next section we are going to be working in the remaining loop now this is actually um, two rows down. Okay, we're going to be working behind where we work the chains. And we're going to grab like the loop right here. Let's see where the first the first stitch is going to be here. Okay, so we're going to work treble crochets in the next 11 stitches working in that remaining loop. Okay, I'll do a few of them with you. Okay, I just want to make sure that you can see where this loop is. Now this stitch is unusually large, but it's actually kind of making the, the difference between um, the last, the, these two stitches here, the um, double crochets and the, and the front post double crochets. Okay, this will all even out in the end, I promise. So go ahead and finish working those 11 stitches, treble crochets working in that single loop. After working those trebles, I'm going to go ahead and verify. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we're good to go. Now I'm going to be back working in these double crochets, working through both loops. Go ahead and work five double crochets. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Go ahead and take the time to remove our stitch markers and put them in the next in the next row here. I'm going to go ahead and attach the one at the beginning also. Okay, and they are a reminder to switch the hooks back out again. So now we're going to work 56 back post double crochets across the cabling section. Okay, now we're going to work the ribbing. We're going to start with front post and then back post. We're going to go ahead and work that front post and back post double crochets across the next 10 stitches. We end this row with a half double crochet in that turning chain. Okay, let's go ahead and chain three and turn. And we're now going to begin row number 20. Remember now we have the front side facing and so we are going to work front post and back post treble crochets over those first 10 stitches. Now we're going to work the wheat cable. We skip two front post treble crochet in the next two stitches. Working behind the last two stitches we're going to front post treble in the two skipped stitches. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble 
in the next two stitches. Working in front of those last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two skip stitches. Okay, and I'm actually this is going to be the last time I actually go through um, this section with you because I think you you've got it. Um, the pattern as you go through. Um, we'll, we'll make that clear for you if you're going to follow this, but it's a very visual thing. You can know that if the cables are turning outward for the weak cable that you're doing it correctly. And if you're forming the shadow boxes for the honeycomb, you know you're doing that correctly. And for, I'll go ahead and do one more with the honeycomb. Skip two. We're going to front post, treble, and the next two stitches. Working behind those stitches front post treble in the two skipped stitches. And then skipping the next two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches. I can pull the loop through. And now working in front of those two stitches. And if you're not sure, Look at where you are and think, okay, so we want these to come in front so that we form the boxes of the honeycomb. So go ahead and front post treble in those two stitches, just like so. Okay, so we're forming another foundation for the honeycomb boxes there. So go ahead and work that all the way across the cabling section. And then remember when you get to the next wheat stitch, make sure that you um, front post treble these two and then work behind those two stitches. And then when you work these front post trebles, then you work in front into these stitches here. So go ahead and work that um, cabling section until you get to the stitch marker. You have to work in that cabling section. Make sure you take a moment to pause and to verify that these cables are going in the direction that you desire. And that looks good. My wheat cables look like wheat cables and the honeycombs look like honeycombs, so I'm good. I've come to the first stitch marker. I'm going to go ahead and change to the smaller hook as it is there to remind me. Otherwise I would forget. Go ahead and take that out for a moment. Now we're using our smaller hook and we're to the tree section and the directions say to double crochet in the next six stitches. Now this is going to be working through both of the loops of the double crochets. So we're going to double crochet in the next six stitches. That's one, two, three, four, five, and one more, six. Okay, now for the chain portion, it says to, we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch. Chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven chains, and then slip stitch in the next stitch. Now we're only working in the front loop, remember, in this section. Now we're going to chain five, one, two, three, four, five and then slip stitch into the next stitch, working in the front loop only. And we're going to do that, let's see how many times. We're gonna do that a total of four times. I'll do it one more time with you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then slip stitch in the front loop only of the next stitch. And then chain five, one, two, three, four, five. And then slip stitch in the next stitch in the front loop only. Okay, so now that is actually two repeats. I'm going to go ahead and do that two more times. Now that I finished that section, let's go ahead and verify that we do have four repeats. There's a seven chain and a five chain. That's one, that's two, three, and four. And as you, as you can see, the tree is starting to take shape. It's starting to gradually getting smaller and smaller and as we work more rows you'll see that it will decrease and you know kind of go to the apex of the tree. Okay now we're going to um, working in the both loops of the stitches we're going to double crochet in the next I believe it's six stitches. Yes six stitches one, 
two, let's bring it down into the viewfinder, three, four, five, and let's go ahead and remove this stitch marker. And six. And the stitch marker was there to remind me to change my hook, so I'm going to go ahead and change my hook to the larger size. And I'm going to put that stitch marker back in on, on both sides. Okay. And then after that, just continue on in working. Go ahead and continue on in working the cabling pattern. Um, if you need more stitch support for that, you can back up and look at, you know, the foundational stitches. The stitches have been worked for about a dozen rows, so you're probably getting tired of the repeat of that. So you should know what to do here with the skip to treble, front post treble, and then working behind, etc. Making sure that you work the weed stitches like the wheat pattern and the honeycomb like the honeycomb. So go ahead and do that. And also don't forget when you... I will actually show you what to do with the ribbing one more time as we go across the row. Okay, as we work the ribbing, I just wanted to remind you again that we're working, starting with the back post, treble crochet. Um, whenever, let's get that one straight. Whenever the front side is facing, we're going to work front post trebles for that ribbing. And whenever the back side is facing, we're going to work back post double crochet. So go ahead and work that across. And the last stitch of this row is going to be a double crochet worked in that turning chain. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we'll have at the end of, of row number 20. I particularly want to focus on, on the tree section. Okay, so you can see that starting to come together. Then so let's go on to row number 21. Now we're ready to begin row 21. We're going to chain two. And we're going to start with a front post double crochet. Remember, we're working with the back side facing, so we're going to use the double crochets for the post stitches on the ribbing. See, so front post, then back post, then front post, and then back post. Go ahead and work that over the ribbing portion, and that'll be over the first um, nine stitches. After that ribbing portion is completed, you end with a front post double crochet. Now over the cabling section, you're going to work 56 back post double crochets and work them all the way until you get to the stitch marker for the Christmas tree section. After the 56 back post double crochets, that brings us to our stitch marker, which tells us that we need to change our hook. And let's go ahead and take out our stitch marker. And our instructions are to double crochet, and this is again working through both loops. Double crochet in the next six stitches, which would be the six double crochets from the um, previous row. That's four, five, Six. Let me verify to make sure that I do have one, two, three, four, five, six stitches. After that, the instructions say to treble crochet in, in the next nine free loops. Now, that's the loops that are left here worked um, when we worked in the front loop only with those slip stitches in the chains. So we'll go ahead and work nine treble crochets working in that remaining loop. Hopefully you can see that there. So go ahead and work those. After working those nine treble crochets in the remaining loop, make sure I have nine, then we're going to work back in these um, double crochets up here and work six of those working through both loops of the previous stitch. That's three four, five, and the last one with the stitch marker is six, and go ahead and change the stitch marker, which tells us to change the hook again, and go back to the larger hook, and go ahead and put your stitch markers back in. OK, 
Okay, so now we are ready to, again, we're working the back post double crochets across the cabling section, and so go ahead and work 56 of those back post double crochets. After working those 56 back post double crochets, we just work the remaining ribbing, starting with front post double crochet, back post double crochet. Again, because we are working with the back side facing, we're using double crochets on these post stitches, front post, back post. So go ahead and work that over the remaining 10 stitches. At the end of this, we're going to work a half double crochet in that turning chain. Okay, go ahead and let's turn. Let's, let's go ahead and take a look first of what we've done. Okay, we've double double checked to make sure our cabling rows look good. It looks good. I just particularly wanted to show you the way the Christmas tree is forming. Okay, it's kind of hard to see up close if I, if I back it up. Okay, so we are off to a pretty pretty good start here. So let's continue on with the next Okay, as we begin row 22. I'm going to try to simplify this for you. If you followed along with the last 21 rows, you should be at a place where you can visually see what comes next with all of the cabling. And I will say for the rows that um, go into the 30s, 40s, and rows 50s, it is all basically the same. The only difference is that when you get to the tree rows, you may be doing maybe, um, you know, these rows instead of these rows on the cabling. And that's really the only difference in the more advanced um, rows as we go down through the pattern. So rather than um, make these videos much longer than they really need to be, I'm going to try to simplify this as much as possible and really focus on the part that you need to see, which is which is the building of the tree section here. Okay, if you need more support, you can always go back to the previous rows, but just know that um, the cabling as you advance into the, like I say, 30, rows 36 and above, which of course we haven't gotten to yet, um, this cabling may differ some. But anyway, um, all that to say, uh, hang in there and um, let's just make these videos a little less taxing on your ears. All right, so with the front side facing, again, I'm gonna remind you that you're gonna be working treble crochets for the ribbing and we're gonna chain three for that. And for the ribbing, if it looks like a front post, you're gonna work a front post treble. And if it's a back post, you know that you're going to work a back post treble with the front side facing. So go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and work the first nine stitches of this side, or actually it's 10, 10 stitches on the right side, nine stitches on the left. So I'm going to work those ribbing and then I'm also going to work the cabling section across and then I will, I will pick up at the tree portion. Okay, after working that stitch portion, do take the time to make sure that you have a wheat stitch on each side with five of the honeycomb cabling in the center. Okay, so do, do make sure that you verify that. And we've come to our first stitch marker. So we're gonna go ahead and change our hook out right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove the stitch marker. And the directions for row 22 on the tree portion say to double crochet in the next seven stitches. Again, working through both of those loops. One, two, three. I'll go ahead and work the seven stitches. After working those seven double crochets, now we're just working in the front loop only. And we're going to work a slip stitch. And then we're going to chain five single, I'm sorry, five chains, one, two, three, four, five, slip stitch in the next stitch. And now we're going to chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then slip stitch in that next stitch working in the front loop only. And we're going to do that a total of three times. So we've just completed the one repeat. So one, two, three, four, five, chains 
and a slip stitch. Did you notice the tree is getting thinner as we go up? And now we chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then do a slip stitch. And that's our second repeat. And now for the third repeat, one, two, three, four, five. Slip stitch in the front loop of the next stitch. And then chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then slip stitch in the next stitch. Okay, now we have Actually, that stitch marker is in the wrong place. Forgive me for that. That should actually be over here, but I'm going to put that down for now. And we're going to work seven double crochets working through both loops of the next seven stitches. One, two, and those seven double crochets should take you right to the beginning where you're going to continue working those 56 stitches with the cables. So go ahead and put your stitch markers back in. Let's go ahead and change out our crochet hook too because that's why they're here to remind us to do that. So put the stitch marker in there and let's try to put this at the, the beginning this time. I put it at the wrong place the last time. Okay, so now we're ready to continue on with the cabling. Again, remembering to work the first eight stitches. You're going to be working the wheat cable and then the next um, section you're going to be working five honeycomb cables and then ending the cabling section with another eight stitches of the wheat cable and then working with um, front and back post treble crochet actually starting with the back post treble crochet we'll just go ahead and work the ribbing over the last um, number of stitches okay we end row 22 with a double crochet in that chain three turning chain. Okay, this is probably a really good time to go ahead and check to verify that your cabling rows over those last 56 um, stitches look correct. That you have the wheat stitch, you have one, two, three, four, five of the honeycombs, and you have another wheat stitch. Uh, I know I'm getting to be pretty redundant on saying this again and again, but trust me, I have done it where I have made a mistake and barreled on through about another 10 or 15 rows and then find my mistake later on and have to do some serious ripping. So I am just trying to save you a little bit of pain there. Do take the time to check on each row. Okay, let's go on now to row 23. This is gonna be with the backside facing. And we are just going to do what we've been doing. Um, just as a reminder, we chain two with the backside facing and we work double crochets, front post, back post, double crochets as we do our ribbing back and forth. And then after we finish the ribbing, we are going to work 56 back post double crochets all across the cabling section. So go ahead and complete that. Okay, after working those 56, back post double crochets, we come to our stitch marker. Let's go ahead and change our hook to the smaller hook. Remove our stitch marker. And we are going to double crochet working through both loops in the next seven double crochets. After finishing those seven double crochets, we're not going to be working in the remaining loop of the trebles. So get that first one there. And you can always find the first treble crochet that you work in because that's where that last slip stitch was worked from the previous row. Or, so go ahead and do treble crochets. And you're going to be working seven of these. After those seven treble crochets worked in that remaining loop, we're going to go back up and be working in the double crochets, working through both loops and work seven double crochets. And this should take you right to the stitch marker. After working that last of the seven double crochets in the same place where the stitch marker was, go ahead and take it out and replace both of them at the beginning and at the end of this section. Go ahead and get that in, in there now, one there. And let's put the other one back at the very beginning of this section. Okay, and again, that's a reminder to change our hook. So let's go ahead and change that back. And now we are just simply going to work the next 
56 stitches are going to have back post double crochets across the cabling section. And just to lead you through this verbally, um, when you get to the ribbing section, we're going to be working back post, I'm sorry, front post and back post alternating with double crochet and then work a half double crochet in the turning chain. Not a double crochet, but a half double crochet there. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish that and I will start at the row 24 as soon as you finish that. Before we begin row 24, I just wanted to pause and give you another clear view of how the tree should be forming. Okay, we've only got uh, a few more rows to go and you'll see the complete tree and I'm really excited about that. So let's go on with row number 24. And just as a reminder, you're going to start this row by chaining three. And for the ribbing sections, we are going to be working the treble front post and back post treble crochet. So go ahead and work the treble front and back post section for the ribbing. Um, that's going to be 10 of those. And then go ahead and work the 56 um, stitches of the cabling, remembering that you're going to be starting with the wheat cable and you're going to have five honeycomb cables that you're forming and another wheat cable. All right, that brings us to our stitch marker, which tells us to change our hooks. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the stitch marker. Now the directions for row 24 on the tree portion say to double crochet in the next eight stitches. And again, working through both loops, go ahead and work through the next eight stitches don't, using your double crochet. After working those eight double crochets, now we're going to only be working in the front loop. We're going to slip stitch in the next stitch. And we're going to now chain, let's see, seven chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Slip stitch in the front loop only of the next stitch. And then we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to slip stitch in the front loop only of the next stitch. And we only have to do that two times, so let's repeat it one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven chains. And then slip stitch in the front loop of the next stitch. And then chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And slip stitch in the front loop of the next. And so let's make sure we just have, have one repeat and then two repeats of that. Now we need to work eight double crochets working through both loops of the next eight stitches. So go ahead and work those. After working those eight stitches, that last stitch should have been in the same place where the stitch marker was located. Let's go ahead and put those stitch markers back in. And since they're a reminder, again, to change the hooks, let's go ahead and, and change the hook size. And let me put my other stitch marker in on this other side where the double crochets begin. So I'm going to be all set. So now, for the remainder of this row, we just work through our cabling portion. Again, make sure that you take time to do a visual check that you have the weed stitch on these eight stitches, and then you have all of these um, honey cones, and then bordered with another with another wheat stitch and then you work the remainder um, of the the ribbing make sure that you use treble crochet and end by working a double crochet in the turning chain now we're going to begin row 25 and because we have the back side facing we are just going to chain two and go ahead and work the ribbing working front post and back post double crochets remember to Always work a front post over the front post, back post over the back post with the ribbing. And then after you finish that ribbing section, we're going to work 56 back post double crochets across the cabling portion until you get onto the stitch marker. That brings us to our stitch marker, which reminds us to change our hook. So let's go ahead and get our smaller hook. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the stitch marker. And the directions for row 25 of the tree portion 
is to double crochet in the next eight stitches. And again, this is working through both loops. So go ahead and crochet in those eight stitches. After working those eight double crochets, now we're ready to work our treble crochets in the remaining loop of the treble crochets down here. Remember, you can find the first one that you work in by finding out where that slip stitch was worked. And we're gonna work it in the loop that's remaining. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna work five of these. So there should be five free loops. I'll just go ahead and work these with you. That's three, four, and five. Let's stop and take a look at that. And then after that, we're gonna go back to working up here and we're gonna work eight double crochets working in both of the loops. So go ahead and work those and the last one should be the stitch with the stitch marker. The last stitch was the one with the stitch marker. And so we can verify that we do have eight stitches. Yes, I do. So we're gonna go ahead and put that stitch marker back in that last stitch worked and that's gonna remind me to change my hook size again and go ahead and put that stitch marker in the very first stitch of this tree section. So now from here, you just need to work the 56 back post double crochets, and then we're gonna be working front post and back post double crochets over the last um, 10, 10 stitches here for the ribbing, and then work a half double crochet in this turning chain. After 25 rows, this is what your tree in the center should look like. It's coming together quite nicely. I hope you're enjoying some of the irregularity of the, the chains here. Kind of gives it more of a lifelike effect, I think, rather than having everything exact. All right, so now we're ready to begin row number 26. And just like the other rows where the front side is facing, you're gonna go ahead and, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that for you. I'm gonna go ahead and chain three, one, two, three, and we're gonna be working front post and back post treble crochet across the ribbing portion across the first here we go first 10 stitches and then you're going to continue with the cabling um, continuing the pattern for the wheat and for the honeycomb and then don't forget the wheat After working those 56 stitches over the cables make sure you do a visual uh, check on that go ahead and change your hook hook size to the smaller one take out the stitch marker and we're going to double crochet, working through both loops, in the next nine stitches. After working those nine double crochets, we're going to slip stitch in the next stitch. This is just working in the front loop only. Chain five, one, two, three, four, five. Slip stitch in the next stitch, working in the front loop only. Chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then slip stitch working in the front loop of the next stitch. And we only need to do one repeat of this because we're getting towards the top of the tree. And then double crochet working through both loops in the next nine stitches. This should take you all the way to the stitch that has the stitch marker. That last stitch has worked where the stitch marker is, so let's go ahead and remove the stitch marker. And it reminds us to change our hook size. And then go ahead and put the stitch marker back in. Put, put them in in both places, at the beginning and at the end of this 21 stitch tree section. Okay, so now we're just ready to finish the cabling portion over the next 56 stitches. And then just as a general reminder, we are working the uh, ribbing starting with the back post treble crochet. Work the last nine stitches in treble crochets. And then you're gonna work a double crochet in this chain three turning chain. Now as we start row 27, we're gonna chain two. The back side should be facing. And we're gonna go ahead and work back front post and back post double crochets for the ribbing. After we complete those stitches, we're gonna work 56 back post double crochets all the way across all of the cabling, and that should bring you to the first stitch marker. 
After those 56 back post double crochets, we come to our first stitch marker. Let's go ahead and change our hook to the smaller hook, remove the stitch marker, and we're going to crochet um, one double crochet in each of the next nine stitches, working through both of those top loops. So go ahead and work those nine double crochets. After working those nine double crochets, we're going to be working in the remaining loop. And remember, find where that last slip stitch was worked and the loop opposite that of that same stitch that it was worked in. Go ahead and work your treble crochet and we're only going to need to work three, one in each of the three free loops. Okay, after we finish that, then we're going to go back to working up on this row here. We're going to work one working through both loops, one double crochet in each of the next nine stitches, and that should bring you to our stitch marker. After working that last double crochet in the same space with the stitch marker, go ahead, remove the stitch marker, put it back in the top of that last stitch just worked, and let's go ahead and change our hook because that's why it's there. And then we're going to put the last, or actually the other stitch marker, where that first double crochet of this section was worked so that we have another reminder. And now to finish out this row, we're just going to work back post double crochets across the next 56 stitches of the cabling section. And then we're going to go all the way um, to the ribbing and we were going to work front post and back post double crochets over the ribbing portion and end with a half double crochet in the turning chain. Before we continue on to the next row, I wanted to show you how the tree is coming out. Uh, we have two more rows and then this will complete our first tree section. Okay, so now we're going to begin with row number 28 and we are working with the front side facing this time, so that means we're going to chain three and we're going to work those front post and back post treble crochets for the ribbing and then after we do that we're going to work our cabling stitches maintaining the pattern with the wheat stitch and then the five honeycomb stitches and then another eight stitches for the wheat stitch again okay so go ahead and work that across until you get to the stitch marker now we get to the tree section of row 28 so it is time to change our hook now that we see that stitch marker let's go ahead and remove the stitch marker and the directions say to double crochet in the next 10 stitches so I'm going to go ahead and again this is working through both loops go ahead and work a double crochet in each of the next 10 stitches okay after working those 10 stitches now what I'm going to show you um, right now is the only time you're going to do this. this. is the apex or the top of the tree. So we're going to do a couple things in the same stitch. So just working in the front loop, we're going to slip stitch. We're going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now we're going to slip stitch right back in that same stitch. Okay, so we're going to have two slip stitches in the same stitch. Let's just kind of make sure that the, you know, the top of the tree is going to be even. It's not going to be, you know, off to the left or off to the right. Okay, after we do that, we're going to double crochet, working through both loops in the next 10 stitches. After crocheting those 10 double crochets, it brings us to the place where the stitch marker is, and we can go ahead and replace the stitch markers, put in the one that you just finished. And we're going to put it in, in the um, first double crochet of that 21 stitch section. And after that, we're going to work the continue working in the pattern stitch of the cabling, making sure that you work the eight stitches for the wheat cable and then the many stitches for 
for the honeycombs. For, I don't know why I can't come up with these names faster for you. I'm sorry about that. My brain's a little slow. And then the honeycomb, I'm, I'm rather the, um, the weed stitch right here. And then since we do have the front side facing, make sure that when you work the ribbing stitches that you're working um, back post and front post treble crochets. And then end by working a double crochet in that chain, turning chain right there. Okay, so go ahead and finish row 28. Up, oh, one more thing. Don't forget to change to the larger size hook. I actually forgot and was barreling on with the smaller hook. So just don't forget, change to the large size hook before you start the cabling and finishing this row. Okay, now beginning row 29. This is what the back side facing. Therefore, you're going to only chain two. And we're going to work front post double crochets and back post double crochets. This is the shorter of the stitches. And also when you get to the cabling section, you're going to work back post double crochets across those 56 stitches. So go ahead and do that. After working those 56 back post double crochets, it's time for us to change the hook when we see that stitch marker. And let's go ahead and remove the stitch marker. I'm going to go ahead and put the double crochet working through both loops. And for this row, we're going to double crochet in 10 stitches. I'm going to go ahead and put that stitch marker back. So go ahead and work those double crochet working through both loops in the next 10 stitches. Now we're going to work a treble crochet in that one place where the two slip stitches were worked in the front loop. Well, let's work in the back loop here, or it's actually the front loop now, but work that treble crochet. And then after that, pardon my, pardon my knot here, um, after that we're going to go back to working in the top loops of the double crochets and we're going to work a double crochet in each of the next 10 stitches, again working through both of the loops. That last double crochet will be worked same place where the stitch marker is, so let's go ahead and move that stitch marker up. So after that we are going to work back post double crochets in each of the next 56 stitches over the cabling pattern. And then after that you're going to work the ribbing starting with a front post double crochet. Remember with the back side facing we're working double crochets on these. Front post, back post all the way and then ending with a back post. And then at the end we're going to work a half double crochet in the turning chain. So go ahead and finish that. That would be row 29. And once again, please don't forget to change your hook. I was about to forget again. Um, it it se seems to be more of a problem. The more familiar you get with the pattern and the faster, more comfortable you are with everything, the easier it is to forget. So don't forget to change to the larger size hook. After completing row 29, I wanted to show you what we're going to do now. I'm going to kind of give a small assignment as I end this video. And that is we're going to work rows 30 through 35. That's a total of six rows. And this is how they're going to be done. The instructions say to repeat rows 10 through 13 and then repeat rows 10 and 11 again. Um, rather than going through all the verbiage about this, there's really nothing new for you to do here. I'm going to go ahead and show you what we're going to do. Okay, for the next six rows, as you, are, you will be repeating rows 10 through 13 and then 10 and 11 again, you're basically going to be working just, just straight single crochet, of course changing the hook size, but just 21 single crochets through the center portion where the Christmas tree or the Yule tree is formed. Let, let's go ahead and take a look at my first Yule tree. I hope you can see this well in the video. I'm going to I'm going to show you a better view of it in the next video um, as I go back downstairs and record in my studio down there. But um, just wanted to let you know what we're going to do for the next six rows is you're just going to continue maintaining the cabling, the the weak cables on both sides, and then the honeycomb in the middle, starting and ending with the ribbing. You've done that for goodness, 29 rows, so you don't need to hear me drone on and on about every stitch at this point. Um, now, if you are in that camp where you are a little slower 
on on learning and I know I do have some really dear friends who have had strokes and and they really do struggle with brain function and um, if, if that is your case or if you just need more help just back this video up go back to where um, the the um, signs at the bottom say rose 10 and and just start there and you can just go through that and it will take you step by step through the cabling if you still need that hopefully you don't since I uh, took the training wheels off of those cables a few rows back so to speak so go ahead and finish up those six rows of the Yule Tree Throw, that again is rows 30 through 36, which is a repeat of rows 10 through 13, and then 10 and 11. And I'll see you in video number two. God bless. Bye-bye.